Hello everyone, welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. A few days ago, I brought you the story that the Australian government is looking at banning social media for kids. And as you know, here in the UK, uh, moves have been made to try to ban telephones in schools, although it's largely left to the school to decide how it wants to do that. From my point of view, taking away social media from the kids is not a good idea. <laughs> it would be better if they just found a way to use it for educational purposes. Maybe somebody somewhere could think about starting an educational stream on social media, which is designed for children in some kind of formal way. But that's not the suggestion. The suggestion is that kids aren't responsible enough and it should be taken away. I mean, it sounds a little bit Victorian, doesn't it? That you just treat the kids like trash and don't give them access to their phones. Anyway, there's a new story today which says that a school academy chain is the first to ban mobile phones. And you might know already that a chain is a group of uh, shops, or in this case, schools, which are somehow interlinked perhaps with the same owner, usually that's the case, um, a company which owns the other companies, shop chains, for example. I'm sure you've all heard of Tesco. That's a chain store with branches in many, many villages and towns. So let's have a look at this. It says School Academy Chain. So that's going to be a series of private schools. If they were government schools, we wouldn't call them a chain. We would just call them, well, government schools. The word chain is usually always applied to the private sector. Okay, this story, um, like many stories in our media, only applies to England. And it's very important to tell you that because sometimes these stories are a little bit confusing. They refer to England, then they refer to the UK, and then they refer to England, and then they refer to the UK or other bits of the UK. So this one looks like it's specifically for England. Okay, so I'm going to read this uh, to you. This is from The Guardian uh, from today which is uh, the 14th of September. A national academy chain will be the first in England to ban mobile phones, removing access to the devices from its 35,000 pupils during the school day because of the catastrophic impact on children's mental health and learning. The Ormiston Academy's Trust, which runs 44 state schools, including 32 secondaries, has begun phasing out access to phones in all of its schools. With eight secondary schools adopting new policies this term and the rest to follow after liaising with parents. Now, I just have to correct myself there. I mentioned to you that chains are usually referred to for private companies, and that is correct. And this Ormiston Trust is a private company, but it's running state schools here. It's not private schools it's running, it's running government schools on behalf of the government. So I don't quite know how that all works, but uh, anyway, it's schools. Um, it's getting rid of mobile phones. Let's continue. 
The move comes as school leaders and policymakers across the world consider tougher restrictions on how children use and interact with smartphones, including a recent French government report recommending uh, a ban on internet-enabled phones for children under 13 and allowing access to social media only after the age of 16. Uh, It's saying here that allowing pupils to keep phones during the day was an inadequate response to the disruption phones caused to students' learning and well-being. We are seeing huge and real concerns around mental health, it says. Uh, We have real concerns about self-harm, attempted suicide, A&E admissions. Uh, These are facts from across the world involving young people and adolescents. We're seeing a clear correlation between that and mobile phone and social media use in particular. Yeah, I mean, of course, uh, they've obviously studied this and they're they're choosing to um, make this decision, but... uh, I don't know. I just think that maybe they're making the wrong decision here. Uh, you know, there's there's some kind of very strange judgment when Britain reports things. Things are often put forward as, oh, well, we know better. They're only children. They won't know. But I think in cases like this, children could actually lead us. I think what we need is a social media design which is educated exclusively, which is designed exclusively, I should say, for education. So uh, that would be much better than trying just to remove phones and social media from kids because... If I'm, for example, addicted to my mobile phone, I have no right to turn to my child and say, you're a bad person because you use your phone too much and I'm going to take it away from you. So I think they're kind of ignoring the point. Uh, Let's see, This, this is a very long story, so I'm just taking out bits of it. I mean, the fact that uh, this private company that's operating state schools is making this decision, one has to ask, is it in the children's best interests or is it because it makes the school look fantastic that you'd want to send your kids there? Other countries have decided to go further with the Netherlands Education Ministry this year banning phones, tablets and smartwatches from classrooms, warning that harsher regulations would follow if schools failed to enforce the ban. Uh, Yeah, Um, and uh, it's saying here, they learn to socialise, and it goes on to talk. It says here, Uh, about different schools uh, reacting in different ways. This man, the chief executive of Ormiston Academy's Trust, he says, uh, culture, um, let me just read this, culture has now finally caught up with technology and the evidence base has now confirmed what many people suspected for a long time that mobile phones are a serious detriment to children's learning. Yeah, that's that's very, very true. But I think we need to see these things in perspective. For example, and I'm just choosing another random story here from the BBC, It says the number of people in Scotland whose deaths were caused by alcohol has risen again to the highest level 
in 14 years. Uh, it says here, um, male deaths which were unchanged, 836. Again, accounts for about two thirds of alcohol specific deaths. Female deaths have increased from 31 to 440. So what it's saying here is 14 years ago, alcoholic deaths were much less than today. Now, here we're talking about people dying and uh, really people with an addiction that they can't control. And again, I think we're back to the same point that, well, if the government can't look after something like that, or if they, they can't take responsibility for the death of people, bearing in mind you can drink alcohol on public transport here and in most other places, if the government can't take control of something like that, then why do we think that we would trust them to look after kids with mobile phones? It doesn't make any sense. Now, I have to say that those uh, alcoholic death figures are all related to Scotland. And we are talking about England and education. But, well, to be honest with you, I don't see a difference here. There is a problem and the governments, whether you want to call them Scottish or English or the central government or whatever, um, I don't see them rushing to deal with the problem. What I see is them... Um, rushing to deal with the symptoms. And this is all about some underlying need for people who don't want to face their feelings. Some people can ignore their feelings by going and taking a drink. Other people ignore their feelings by going onto the internet to try to find joy. Now, the answer to this kind of stuff is not easy, but it does mean that they should be looking for some new positive way to engage us. And again, that brings us back to the same question. Well, I'm looking at the government to fix this when actually all we need to do is to start living more positively with a few good habits. Um, yeah, I mean, I know I talk a lot about the 1980s, but they weren't that bad. We didn't have to put up with things like um, the internet and social media, but uh, we did have to put up with alcohol abuse. And it looks like not much has changed since those days. So very sad, very sad. So that, that's my story from today, which is all about the, uh, the social media for kids and also um, alcoholic deaths, which are on the rise. Two very different things, but I think we can pull out some common threads about the behaviours of people. Right, well, I'm off to enjoy my Saturday, um, so I'll catch you all again soon. Take care. Bye.